Time for our characters to gain a level or two and start their next adventure. Time in Waterdeep is largely uneventful. You tend the bar, schmooze the regulars, regale the fascinated Floon Poff with stories of Clough and the Tomb of the Undying Nation. It's, it's as you're breaking up a bar fight one night that something strange happens. You're in the middle of pulling apart two gnomes who are at each other's throats over whether or not the Oxford comma is necessary. Boo, nerds, get out of my bar. It is, though. <laughs> it is necessary. It's so necessary. It is I mean, so we... necessary. All right? Legally speaking, as a matter of the I... law. I... <laughs> it's embarrassing. This is still an open question for some people. It's just like really embarrassing I... for them. I... It, it puts things in good order. Now, it, it makes sure you know what you're talking about. Now, get out. Get out. <laughs> I'll have none of that here. I literally have in my notes, let Heath interrupt to defend the Oscar <laughs> combat. <laughs> so anyway, as you're pulling apart two gnomes and Dave the Dragonborn about whether or not to use the Oxford comma, you are caught on the chin by a wayward fist and your wrath of storm activates by instinct. The poor drunken gnome that hit you is blasted clear through the doors of the squeaky wheel and into a very luckily placed hay cart across the street. Now at 6th level, you have Thunderbolt Strength. When you deal lightning damage to a large or smaller creature, you can also push it up to 10 feet away from you. Well, I like that one. <laughs> that came in very handy. Sorry about that, mate. Wait, was he the pro or anti? Oh, he was anti. How sorry? Oh, all right. I'm putting your portrait up on the wall. As Don't let this guy in. I don't even know why y'all have that grammar wall. It doesn't make any sense for a bar. Because you're Hitler and Stalin. That's why. Because you're both <laughs> Hitler and Stalin. That you sound different. This is Heath. <laughs> Heath, 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 what are I you have doing ran here? into this universe Heath. to yell about the Oxford Heath. comma. He's there with Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and George Orwell. And okay, going like, wait, I don't understand this stop at all. This is fucking weird. I said we were making a pit stop, Martin. You cheated on your wife a bunch. Let me do this. <laughs> Yeah. Claw, you spend yes. your time back in the city as you usually do, training with Alex and honing your skills. A few days before you depart, the training hall is once again transformed from its decorations of slideshows for boring small talk and hot water spigots for shower thoughts into something entirely new. The walls and floors, every inch of the place is covered in clothing racks. And on these clothing racks are what you would recognize as sports jerseys. Alex tosses you one that's about your size and says, Claw, this is the holy garb of our order, the sports jersey. Wear it and you will be impossible to remember. You will blend into any crowd <laughs> because there's literally no outfit less interesting than a sports jersey. Use its power wisely. So now that you are 6th level, you have Shadow Step. At 6th level, you gain the ability to step from one shadow into another, assuming you're wearing your jersey. When you are in dim light or darkness, as a bonus <laughs> action, you can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space you can see that is also in dim light or darkness. But here's the thing. I notice every jersey when I walk into a room. Sports jerseys are like the yeah, least. Is... They're brightly colored and I they're... Could yeah, disagree. But, but keep in mind that every character in this universe other than us is played by Eli. Yeah. And he doesn't notice sports jerseys. And, yeah. and counterpoint, counterpoint. Have you noticed the person in the jersey or just the jersey? Okay, okay. <laughs> Well, they all kind of look alike. So, I mean, yeah, see, <laughs> see, Racist. humans, Stop. they all kind of look alike to me. <laughs> so, yeah, you have you then have advantage on the first melee attack you make before the end of the turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Snedrick, much as you'd like to spend your time back in Waterdeep by yourself at the Poff Library, you are now a bit of a celebrity. After all, as a group, you won the Shattering, regained control of the Colossus for the people of Rhodes, you bested the Prefect of Athiana, and though nobody remembers it, you freed the city of Cluth. The Poff Library is pretty much the only place you get peace and quiet, and it's on one of these rare moments that you're once again approached by Floon, who says, Snedric, may I speak to you? I, it's about your slots. I'm sorry, my what? Your slots. I st- uh, your thoughts? You know, this is a, this is a library. It's kind of the only place I get peace and quiet. So. Yeah. It's your slots, your spare slots, specifically about how you fill your slots. You see, <laughs> I've <Raging>. noticed <laughs> that you've been studying quite a bit of divination magic, yes? But have you considered using magic to make yourself better at magic? I feel like you're not allowed to wish for more wishes. Like That's got to be in the book some damn where, doesn't it? Well, it turns out, no, it's not. You see, as you've gotten better at telling the future, you're now able to see a future where your slots are no longer filled. <laughs> and if you can remember a future... <laughs> where your slots are unfilled, your slots become unfilled, you see. Just as you can unfill a hole you just filled by knowing it will someday be unfilled. I, I don't <laughs> feel like further. that's how holes work, but all right, yeah. all right, I like the way we're, I like where we're going. I like that Floon Puff is Tobias Funke now. <laughs> <laughs> so you now have expert divination. Beginning at sixth level, casting divination spells comes so easily to you that it expends only a fraction of your spellcasting efforts. When you cast a divination spell of second level or higher using a spell slot, you regain one expended spell slot. The slot you regain must be of a level lower than the spell you cast, and it can't be higher than fifth level. And then, after you have that narration, which explains what the fuck he was just talking about, Floon grasps you very gently by the side of your head, and he says, Nidric? Don't forget what I've told you. And if you do forget, please don't blame God. <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> All right. I don't think I've ever used a divination spell, but should I ever decide to do that, that could be pretty nifty. That night, again, you dream. You are flying up over the city of Waterdeep, over tall mountains, and into a thick green forest populated by strangely woven nests the size of houses or even castles. Inside one of these nests, you fly through seemingly endless hallways until you reach a darkened chamber. And in that chamber, a noble eagle Aracocra with graying feathers sits before a fire. There is a knock at the door behind you, and then you wake up. Dave, aside from your fight over the Oxford comma, your trip back to Waterdeep is fantastic. Unlike Bridget, who abides fame in the name of the bar, Snedrick, who abhors it, and Claw, who avoids it altogether, you love your newfound celebrity and spend your days telling anyone who will listen in the squeaky wheel slightly, shall we say, altered versions of your adventures, where you turn into a falcon at the appropriate times and... Land on a beach after your first attempt to climb the turtle. Oh, I am so absolutely getting zone of truth. <laughs> did I ever actually successfully land on a beach from the top you did, rope? You did finally. Oh no! You I don't think I ever did. Never landed on it. I feel like I missed like eight times well, in a row, missed, and it was yeah. impossible. It was when mathematically it, nearly impossible. Yeah, when you tell it, you do. Yeah, first time. Exactly. <laughs> However, just before it's time to leave, you are visited by. Gladys, your patron, who, through her otherworldly powers and Carl's tattletailing, is aware of exactly <laughs> how it's been going. She appears to you in your mirror, as usual, and says, Look, doll, I harbor no delusions that you're going to stop being, well, an idiot. But if you're going to go around being a jackass in my name, you're going to do it, well, more competently. Uh, hey, and- hey, Gladys, I don't say your name when I do it. I just... Well, no, but everyone knows you're my my powers. You're my demon powers. Did not Carl like everyone's walking on me? Around. <laughs> Tell him I didn't knock. Tell him I didn't say anything. 
Uh, Carl, Carl didn't tell I, me I, anything. I heard him say that. <laughs> he heard you say that. Uh, no, I was talking about, I was talking about someone else. Okay. Who? I, hey, Gladys, if I told you how good Dave has been, he never kills me for no reason. See? I told you. <laughs> All right. Well, here. And she hands you out through the mirror a glowing silver charm in the shape of a die. It's a lucky charm, kid. And believe me, you're gonna need it. Okay, I feel like I'm going to roll it and like most of the things are going to be bad for me somehow. <laughs> well, no, this is Dark One's own luck. So starting at sixth level, you can call on your patron to alter fate in your favor. When you make an ability check or a saving throw, you can use this feature to add a D10 to your roll. Ooh. You can do so after seeing the initial roll, but before any of the roll's effects occur. So you can look and see, oh, I rolled low, and then add it afterwards. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or a long rest. Nice. Hey, everybody, just jumping in to thank you once again for listening to the show. I know, I know this month's episode is a short one, but we got to get these prep episodes out of the way so we can jump back into the adventure. And we have some absolutely super duper fun stuff planned for you in this next coming arc. I uh, just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you who support us on Patreon. Uh, it physically makes it possible for us to do the show, but it's also really kind of you to support us financially as well as listening and all the nice things that you say and all the support that you lend to the show. We really appreciate it. If you're enjoying the show and hey, maybe you want to hear it more than once a month. That's right. We are getting pretty close to that goal, my friends. So uh, head on over to patreon.com forward slash DND minus. Give us as little as a dollar a show and we'll be at that two shows a month goal before you know it. Uh, and if you can't afford to support us financially, hey, why not hop on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts and give us one of those five-star reviews. I like that I mentioned a couple episodes ago that it sends me an email. And so now people just use it as a chance to like direct message me. And you know what? Go for it. I'm I'm all about it. If that's if that's how I get five-star reviews, you can send me your grocery lists, people. I'll I'll do whatever it takes. All right. Well, uh, that is it. Our next show will be out the first. Friday after the first month, first Friday after the first Friday after the first Wednesday of next month. And it's going to be great. And I'll let you get back to it. Thanks. As you're all enjoying your stay back in Waterdeep, there is one troubling aspect. Blade has said nothing about the next part of the wand to you. In fact, he barely speaks to any of you until one Sunday morning, very early, Blade Vigil wakes up and gathers all of you in the main room of the squeaky wheel. He insists that you dress in your finest and heads down to the sewers. He looks especially displeased to be making this visit and as you reach Gary's, you see why. It's no longer a mud hut, or a casino, or a house on a hill. It is now a mega church. Oh, Ugh. I'm. I gotta be honest, Blade. I, I, I'll, I'll probably mess piss off Valkyr if I, uh, you know, if I go to church. So maybe, maybe. Skip this one out. Yeah. Plus, nobody in there is going to be vaccinated. I feel like it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bad yeah. No. Idea. No. Nobody's vaccinated, and uh, I, I can't go in because uh, this thing burns like the Dickens when I'm on hollowed ground. And he points to his scar and he goes, "But you know, it's Gary's new thing, and you don't want to miss his sermon, so you guys better hurry inside there." I feel like I do. Uh, I. I mean, but you'd be really hurt if you miss it. Okay. <sighs> I made up a whole thing. All right. Worked really, worked All really right. hard on it. Yeah. What religion yeah. is the church? Oh, you're going to find out? Great. You're going to find out. So you enter the church in darkness. 
Families from all over Waterdeep pack the pews in their Sunday best, and then a hush falls over the crowd. Slow choral music plays, and Gary appears in a spotlight center stage wearing the sparkliest, whitest suit you've ever seen. He's going to hang from the ceiling like a fucking mirror ball. <laughs> 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 Don't spoil the ending. Thank you. This is a Newsboys movie. Big top. A lot of people boys. don't know that in this universe. Fantasy Newsboys. In all the universes, actually. It's common. That's one of the few commonalities across all worlds. Everybody hates the Newsboys. <laughs> At last, he speaks into a microphone, which is also glittery and white, and says, My friends, if you know me, you know that I've been many things in my life. I've been a magic trinket salesman, a tattoo artist, a casino floor boss, and so much more. But as the forces of darkness grow stronger, I took a look at my life, and I realized I'd been focusing on the wrong thing. I need to get that fucking money, baby! <laughs> and as he says that, the stage lights blast on and a chorus of Garys in golden robes sing a spirit-filled hallelujah behind him. He points a muddy appendage at the four of you, who are suddenly bathed in spotlights as well, and sings, Are you ready for a blessing? Oh, I feel like he wants us to answer. Yes, uh, you. Go ahead, please. Clap on Her, two reckon. and four. Can we roll for this being over? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, maybe we rhyme it with yesing. I don't know. Uh, so sure. you are led on stage and each of you is handed a scroll. And he says to you, open up your gear books and let me know what blessing. Is that like. rhyming with prayer, but like Gary? Like uh, Gary. Yeah, it's Gary. Uh, it's me. Oh, I said, wordplay. Gear book. Did a thing. Reaching. Nailed it. Anyways. All right. <laughs> As he says that, a curtain in the middle of the stage drops and statues of over a dozen gods are revealed. Uh, and I'm going to send a list to you now, but I will read them for our listeners. So give me one second. Just commas would have been helpful here. We're on the <laughs> uh, yeah, Oxford commas. Just regular ones to start yeah, with. Just regular ones commas. too. Okay. It's the, it starts with numbering on four. <laughs> no, it starts on one. I don't think it does. I see the number four. The numbering as the first starts four. with four. Oh, yeah. okay. Just for some reason, those numbers didn't make it into the paste. But but yeah. I see where they. Yeah. So one is Umberly. So Umberly the Kraken oh, okay. is a school hey. nurse or no? No. <laughs> see, this is why you need Oxford Comics. God damn it. <laughs> I, I feel like there's four things. Okay. You, you explain. You, yeah. you go ahead. Molly. So, yeah. So the gods you have to choose from are Umberly the Kraken, a school nurse. A tourist with a camera around their neck. The following sentient man-sized pills, each of which is its own god. Xanax, Molly, and Ridlin. A king and a crown. <laughs> a lustful-looking dragon. A glittering mist, which, in Gary's defense, is hard as fuck to make a statue out of. Like, give him a little bit of credit. <laughs> a wooden puppet with a very long nose. A fat white guy wearing camo. A pendulous pocket watch. A baby wearing sunglasses. The actor Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Bridget Scott e. Valkyr. E. <laughs> a muscular warrior carrying a giant shield, a fairy princess, a werewolf, an ant, a suit of armor, a whirling dervish with a blade in each hand, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a man with a fish <laughs> sticking out of his ear, and an aracocra in mid-flight. Okay, Ooh. I stopped listening after the drugs. I want the three drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you got to choose a drug, like so many things in life. <laughs> I, well, I have to pick one of those? Yeah, each is its own gun. Yeah, Xanax, Molly, or Ritalin. Oh, yeah. wait. Um, can the Ritalin be Adderall? So Ritalin, <laughs> the substance, not the act of Ritalin. Got it. Yes. Okay. You spelled it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like neither, but closer to the latter than the former. Oh, I, know well, the I just spell check that. Why is there a T in there? All right. Dave, you want to go first? Yeah, I actually, I'm changing my mind. Molly sounds just always great, but. I would like Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please. Oh, Jesus dang it, you took mine. Christ of <laughs> Nazareth. All right. This is Mythia's Grace, a restorative power born from the spirit of the Zora champion Mythia, 
when your hit points run out. <laughs> All right, now, hold on. We're going to get sued for this shit. <laughs> Nintendo's serious about their shit. <laughs> the next time your hit points run out, you will automatically regain some of them plus temporary hit points as a bonus. And a sword mouth. I get a sword mouth, right? No, no. You said, I heard somebody Just said that. Just coming back from Who the dead power. <laughs> Gladys, sword mouth? <laughs> will help. You got to talk to her about it. All right, who's next? I have a question. Sure. The following sentient man saw... That's not a... What is that? Because those is, words together, I don't get them. The following sentient man-sized pills, each of which is its own god. Yeah, no, I, I can read, but I don't get <laughs> what they mean. Oh, so he's saying that Xanax, Molly, and Ridlin are are man sized pills. They're they're yeah. pills, oh, each of gotcha. which is okay. sentient and okay, a yeah, god yeah, of yeah. itself. Okay. Yeah, and man sized. Okay, I thought it was its own entry, and I was like, "There's no, <laughs> it doesn't matter." Can I combine two? Um, you mean like half a Xanax and half a Molly? No, 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 no. I have two. It's, you you should not do that. I want to combine. <laughs> Listener at home, we do not endorse combining these no, medications. Not, not the drugs. Can I combine a baby wearing sunglasses and Robert Downey Jr. so that it's a baby Robert Downey Jr. wearing sunglasses? All right. That's okay. a really Let good me fucking read question. I'm going to have to pull this out of my ass now. Okay. I want a lustful looking Pinocchio. Yeah. Right. All right. So this is a blessing of void sight and the blessing of wild speech. You oh. gain dark vision for 60 feet and can see through magical darkness. If you already have dark vision, the range is increased by additional feet, and okay. you are always under the effect of the speak with animals spell. So here's what I'm going to do. Because you chose half with both. Oh my God, you can actually talk to ravens. <laughs> or whatever. You can talk you to falcons speak. now. That's you can amazing. speak to animals, but only when it's dark out. <laughs> Claw. All right. All right. So Cedric, I, I, I have I to feel like Darukia, Urbosa, Ia, and Ravali Ia are in there somewhere. Um, and I would really like the the shield. I would like the Goron power, but I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh a. Where's the? Is it a fat white guy in camo? A fat white guy wearing camo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Fat white guy wearing camo. Blessing of the hunt. You gain a boon to your attributes. The ability to track and hunt a target you mark. And greater awareness. I thought it was going to be specifically duck related. Like <laughs> Bill Robinson. I should have uh, power over ducks. And we'll, we'll, we'll find out what that power is the first time you use it. Also, where were you on... on 9-11. Where, where... <laughs> <laughs> I also January 6th. Capital, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um oh god. I don't want to piss off Valkyr or Umberly because they're like a thing. Don't worry, I talked to them about it. They said this is cool. Uh, okay. Uh, they said it's cool if Bridget doesn't pick her own god, Valkyr. Yeah, no, they're super chill about it. Wow. Yeah, they've been poly lately, so they've okay. just been like, way. I mean, I was going to go for the fairy princess since we've encountered so many fairies recently. But, uh, yeah, I'll go with the muscular warrior carrying a giant shield. That actually sounds a little better. It's pretty on point. Who did you encounter that's a fairy? Oh, they were outside on the gate. I did, uh, I, I did a check, and I man, I was, I was certain that there were fairies there. That's a solid bit. I gotta be honest, man, I thought you were doing like a, a weird homophobia thing. And I was like, this is gonna be weird to cut from the podcast. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it's just like a bunch of homos in this podcast, let me tell you. Well, you put down Fairy Princess. What did no, you no, mean by I, that? That's one of them. I just, <laughs> I don't it's really more you who jumped to that. Just I... to be clear. No, Fairy Princess is not. You know, you know, okay, Fairies this are is... real. You sing to them. So you have a monster girl from a far away land. <laughs> so this is the Great Fairy's Veil. Upon waking, you have a single use resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage oh, yeah. from non-magical attacks. The veil repairs itself and protects you once again at each sunrise. So you'll get resistance to the first bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing attack of the day. Of the nice. day. 
Yeah. Noise. That's the kind of life she lives, though. <laughs> to be honest with you. That's morning. usually going to be used in town. <laughs> yeah. While you're getting your morning <laughs> coffee, you get your. Uh, yeah, over over a comma argument. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that everybody? So I think so. I right. one question before we move on. I felt like you were tra- you know you were setting me up to pick the lustful looking dragon. What was going to happen if I picked that? That's a great question. I don't. I I'm sure I did. Oh yeah, makes dragons non hostile to you. I feel like that would be useful for like bridges. <laughs> <laughs> You return from Gary's to find the bar empty, except for Blade and three Aracocra. Yay, we're going to my place. That's right, Claw. You recognize one of them. It is your sister, Nitin, named for Dungeon Master patron Nitin, and her two royal guards. Her and Blade are speaking in hushed voices when you enter, and in the typical style of the royal family, she gets right to business. Bra? Hello, brother. Blade here wrote a while back telling me that you're gathering the pieces of the wand, including the one in our father's possession, the Sunstone. My intention was to ask him for it and bring it to you here and spare you the trip. Trouble is, someone's attacked him and stolen it. So if you're going to fight back against this demon queen or whatever, we have got a robbery to solve. And then she pulls from her bag a set of metal attachments that clip to the end of your wings and says, come, brother, it's time to fly. I put on my sports jersey. (laughs) She can't see me, right? (laughs) No, she can see you. You just have the power to leap from darkness to darkness. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) But you are wearing a sports jersey. (laughs) The camera pans away. Proceeding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.